Roads. We're trying to ride around on Route 66 today. But sometimes we don't have a choice. Uh, Route 66 put us right back on I-40. <clears throat> so for any of you people that are interested in uh, cruising Route 66, it's very dissected. The road doesn't really exist anymore, just pieces of it do. So it's pretty cool, the pieces that do. It looks like it might be coming up. A lot of advertisements for things. On yeah. 66. Where do you get off here for? Because we were trying to take Route 66, but sometimes you just don't even have a choice. You weren't really running into a lot of. 203 topless country. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <clears throat> but anyway, we've had a little bit of request to do a segment on what got us started doing the full-time RV. We're really not even officially full-timers. We're kind of semi-full-time. We're going to be living in the RV from the time that we left our house until the time that we get back to our little smaller house that we built in northern New York, up in the Adirondack Mountains. It'll be 10 months that we've been away and we'll be living in the camper. But most of that time, about seven months, we'll be doing work camping in Cherokee, North Carolina at a Yogi Bear campground called Yogi and the Smokies. So we'll be doing pretty much whatever they need us to do there. We've got a contract to work at the beginning of the season. Uh, the latest we're supposed to report is March 18th and work until the last day of October, so Halloween day. And then we'll hightail it back to Elizabethtown where we will work our wreath business that we've been doing for about 20 years. So people have asked us why. People have asked us what gave us the idea of doing this to start. So we can blame that big time on two people. <laughs> a couple? <laughs> a couple. A couple that I know? Yeah. They know who they are. Yeah. Thank Should we you. mention their names though? Yeah, I don't know. Wait a bit. Wait a minute. Maybe not. No, I probably won't mention. We won't. We won't mention <laughs> 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 And that was a chance meeting at an RV show in Vermont where neither one of us were really looking for a camper, them or us. And we just sat in this camper that we were really comfortable in. And we met this couple and they looked way too young to be full-time RVers and they told us they were full-time RVers. But the husband was very quick to tell us that they're not retired. <clears throat> then we were really confused. Because we're like, how are you a full-time RVer, but you're not retired? This is before we really knew much about the whole thing. Then they explained how they did this thing called work camping. And we're like, what the heck is that? We kind of had an idea what work camping. We'd seen people working in campgrounds that lived there. And stuff. I think we thought it was specifically only with campgrounds. We realize now yeah. it's much more than just campgrounds. Yeah. Work camping could be working at a beet farm, working at Amazon working at a gift shop, working at a hotel, working just about any service industry. Yep. Um, it's basically like seasonal work. Except selling usually, Christmas trees. Usually um, incorporated in most, I guess, I would say most of the time, incorporated it in the agreement is a uh, place to stay as part of your package. Mm -hmm. But not always. Yeah, we're going to work a certain amount of hours for our site with full hookups and our electricity and everything at the campground we're going to be at in the Smokies of North Carolina, close to the Tennessee border. And in return, we are going to work three additional days for pay. And the pay, you're not going to get rich as a work camper. You will basically end up with some money for spending money and hopefully be able to buy your food and things like that. Your fuel. Yeah. But, <clears throat> so we're both going to do that. So, Betsy and Wayne were the ones that probably kind of had the most influence early on, <laughs> um, getting us thinking about it. We both knew that um, the line of work that we were in, we knew that we both were getting pretty worn down from it. And kind of felt like we were in this <laughs> pattern of the same thing over and over and just kind of knew that we needed to do something more than that. And 
our little one week vacations at a time were just not cutting. They were teasers. We kept saying we absolutely love to travel. And how we had can done we do quite this? a bit of traveling. Yeah, but how can we do this? We've never done long distance traveling with our camper. We've always just hopped in my car, packed mm -hmm. through in a tent, stayed in motels, <laughs> and just kind of flew by the seat of our pants then too, but it's very different pulling your camper behind you. So we just knew something different had to happen, and we knew that it wasn't going to happen quickly, but if we wanted it to happen, it could happen. Uh, we just had to kind of put things in motion. And there were times that I <laughs> wondered if we were doing the right thing. Um, you can still have doubts about it even once you get started. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you miss your family, it's the biggest drawback. Well, I, I mean, even preparing for it. Like, mm -hmm. preparing for it meant that you had to get rid of things. For us, we knew it meant we had to sell Very a bigger house, we needed to a downsize. daunting task, getting rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah. So emotionally and physically just exhausting. But, <laughs> you know, we sold our bigger house and we built a much smaller house. And one of the biggest keys, anybody that's listening to this, if you're thinking about doing something like this, what, do you, what am I going to say? Be debt free. You got to get debt free. Yeah just really can't do it that I can see if you have much debt. You can, but it, it just ties you to the job more than you. That's the thing about work You're camping is that there's some freedom. <laughs> well, and there's, you have a sense of freedom that if it doesn't work out, I mean, of, of course, hopefully you'll do everything that you can to stay at the job that you're committed to doing, but if by chance something doesn't work out, whatever it may be, you always have the option to kind of move on, and there are a ton of work camping jobs out there, versus when you are strapped with this debt, you're, you're, you feel stuck. You don't feel that freedom of, I can move on. I mean, you do, because you can change jobs, you know, regular full-time jobs, but still, that, that can be tricky. It's kind of nice when your house has wheels. It gives yes. you more options. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think the other question was... Whose idea was whose it idea first? Whose idea was it at first? I think it was kind of a mutual thing. More me than you, you think, at yeah. the beginning? <laughs> you were... Kind of caused you anxiety even thinking about it? Well, he wanted to do this and not have a house. And, you know... Thinking about it now, I could see the perks of that, but I also see the downfalls of that. And for me, I really just needed, I needed a home base. I needed a place where I could come together with my family, our friends, and just call home. And I, it was a sense of security for me because I always thought like if something were to happen with our health or whatever. Or if you just didn't like being in the camp, yeah. you just got sick of being on the road had a place to go and, and it was a familiar place you know that we, we felt ownership to so well, I, we ought to feel ownership because we did a lot of work <laughs> so that's we why I at it. first had a lot of anxiety is because you know doing this without I mean getting rid of everything I don't know still, how people do that I don't know I know a lot of people do and God bless them and they say that they get again, it down to where they can just be in the RV they have nothing in storage. They say there's a sense of freedom, and I understand that sense of freedom because You're not we, definitely, we definitely experienced some of that, getting rid of a lot of the stuff that we had. But we still have stuff. We still have too much stuff. Yeah, we do. <laughs> he has too much stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> we have too much stuff still. But we don't have anything in storage that we pay for, we, you know, like a self-storage place. Yeah. And we've heard of a lot of people that go full-time and the stuff they just can't part with, they put in storage and then they're paying, you know, 100 or $200 a month <clears throat> for this stuff. And some of it they haven't laid eyes on in years. And then they, in the back of their head, they're like, oh man, I have this stuff and I don't feel like going back and dealing with it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really up to the individual. Everybody's different. And just because we feel this way doesn't mean that everybody feels this way, but this, just wanted to answer some of those questions that we were asked. Um, this is kind of the experimental year. We're kind of seeing how this all works, what we 
like about it, what we don't like about it. We haven't even started work camping yet. Work camping is going to start in another, how many days? Ten days? Yeah, it's something. I don't even know today. Whatever the date is today. <laughs> this is one of the hazards, folks. Or perks. Yeah, half the time you don't know what day of the week it is. I know it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah. Hang on, I can tell you what time it is. <laughs> I have to look at my phone to tell you what the date is. It's Tuesday, March 7th. <clears throat> okay. So we have about 10 days. And we're traveling back east right now. We're still in New Mexico. Hope to make it into Texas tonight. And, um, you know, it's funny. We can lay in the camper at night watching TV, and we'll say a lot of people would feel sorry for us, but we're really just about as comfortable as we could be <clears throat> in our camper. And we've got our dogs with us. Um, the traveling part is quite enjoyable. You do spend a lot of money on diesel, I would tell you that. So far we've been traveling for over two months and we have been to so many places and experienced so many things. And it's been like a dream come true, it really has for both of us. Is there any other questions that we wanted to answer? Um, I was gonna say when Doug was talking about the camper and waking up in it, it's funny because our constant is the RV. So we always know what our bedroom looks like. We always know what the bathroom looks like or the kitchen or the toy hauler part or whatever. But like we know that is always the same for us. But in the morning we'll wake up and we'll be like, where are we? Yeah. Like, you know, our constant, <laughs> you we really wake have up, to remind everything yourself. looks normal, but you step Inside. out your door, <laughs> you look out your window mm -hmm. and the scenery can change daily. Dramatically. Yep. So that's kind of the cool part, but just as we have to remind ourselves of what day it is, we have yeah. to remind ourselves of where we're at. I have to remind myself, is it a day that we're moving, that we're going to be on the road? Is it a day that we're going to be sightseeing? Is it a day we're going to be just relaxing? Um, it, I mean, you, you still have things to do. You know, days that you have to hook up and you have to go through all that and you have to prepare. You don't know where, we never know where we're going to stay at night. We really never almost without exception. We might have an idea of what town. Like we have no idea. We we know maybe how far we want to go today, <laughs> but we have not made any reservations. Amarillo by evening. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we're headed yeah. now, we think. Yeah. You yeah. know what? The beauty of the whole thing is if we see something else that strikes our fancy, it might not be there. Or if we get too tired or if we're there too early, we might go beyond that. Because yep. we really need to get back east. But we want to make the head and back part as enjoyable as we can and use up most of the time that we have. Yep. But we're still going through some pretty cool places like Memphis, where we've been before, Nashville. <laughs> Yeah. You know, places that we'd love to spend some extra time. Places we've never been that maybe we want to spend time, but we just don't know until we get there. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah, would say... Yeah, on 40, we're heading to a different area. North, we're on 10 pretty much, heading west. And now heading back east, we're on 40, so we're kind of north of all the states, the northern part of the states that we've already been through. The other thing that I just wanted to say, the, I think the hardest part for, for me, and probably I think Doug would agree, is we really miss our family and our friends. Right? Yeah, definitely. But what the camera. does help a little bit is technology. <laughs> Thank the Lord for technology. It's not the same, but it sure makes it easier. I think about people. <clears throat> having to wait for a letter and how the heck are we going to get a letter? We don't have a mailing address to where we're at. So. We could have got off of Route 66 again. This is tricky trying to stay on Route 66, folks. I can tell you that. Carlsbad Caverns. Yeah. We went to Carlsbad Caverns. Yep. <laughs> it's that way. <laughs> yeah, we're north of there now. So I think so, that's it, right? One thing I will tell you is this part of the trip is purely been living off of savings 
<clears throat> we knew for quite some time that we wanted to do this, so we'd been saving money because it is costly to head all the way out west. I mean, we went all the way from northern New York State to southern California, so you really couldn't go much further. <clears throat> and we have burned a tremendous amount of diesel fuel. <laughs> That's but it's probably all been that's probably Without your busy, biggest expense. And then um, food, probably restaurants. If you, you know, when you're in an area, you want to try certain dishes that they eat in that area. It's very easy when you're out. Oh, let's just grab. Yeah. Whatever. This meal, then, that meal. Yeah. So that can cost you some money. We'll kind of plan like the day, like, okay, today if we're going to be out, pack a sandwich or make extra, like I made goulash last night, so we'll have goulash for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sick of goulash. Yeah. Sorry folks, I can see that uh, <laughs> this road is causing the uh, camera to really rock back and forth. Well, hopefully that answered some of the questions that uh, people had, and if you have other questions, let us know. Thanks, bye. Hey everyone, if you're enjoying our videos, I hope that you like comment and subscribe to our channel. Thanks.